now for Jesus painted all ministers with evangelist George Vestine. Over to you, Brother George. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, Child of weakness, watch and pray, Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all, all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, we weren't able to be here last week, uh, but uh, we um, had a great time this morning at the church and want to send the program out to the folks that uh, were there with us this morning that uh, maybe were just visiting our church. But we had um, our Christmas dinner and uh, our Christmas um, gathering. Uh, we had some visitors come. We had uh, a nice crowd in that church, and which I... Um, have been looking for for a long time is a, a group of folks just coming ready to worship the Lord and we had a nice little choir this morning and then we had some um, food and fellowship afterwards and uh, had a great time so send a program out to those folks I also uh, want to send this song out I've sang it uh, twice I had never sang it before and um, I had uh, one of the ladies at the church, Miss Wilma, asked me if I'd ever done it, and I never had. Uh, I hadn't heard it, but I'd never done it. Uh, but we'll try it for her. So, Miss Wilma Ray, if you watch this uh, this evening, this uh, is for you. We're looking for the King, the new Messiah.
I'll send the whole program out to uh, to my mama and uh, send it out to uh, the church there uh, at Duck Run, Duck Run Community Church. Pray for those folks. Pray that uh, uh, they're having, I know the weather back there has been a little touchy on the roads from what I've seen, but uh, I pray that they've been having some good services and um, pray that everything's going well with them. Send it out to Kurt and Wilma. Um, we've got some folks that watch, and, and uh, I'll send it out to Shannon McMillan. Uh, he listens on his way to church. If he's listening tonight or if he watches this, send the program out to him and his son. And a Merry Christmas to you. Send it out to David and Tracy Eichenlaw. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Um, good to spend time with you there a few weeks ago. Send it to Brad and Gina and Allie uh, Harris. Look forward to seeing them in um, a couple weeks back home there. And um, send this song out to all those folks at Rush Free Baptist, Duck Run Community uh, Church there. Curtis Jones, uh, as pastor, send it to, to them. He was born in Bethlehem, they say. There was a star to light the path to where he lay. Rich or poor, they came from far and near. Cause they all heard the reason he was here. He was the Son God sent to one and all. Put on this earth to hang there on that cross. Born to die so we could live. He had the birthday, we got the gift. They wrapped him up with gentle hands. God hoped the world would understand. Stand. Eternal life we shall receive, and all he asks in return is that we just believe he was the Son God sent to one and song here and um, somebody had asked me for this here a while back and uh, when you do these songs um, one time a year it's kind of hard to um, remember for me where they go but we'll try Mary did you know that your baby boy one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy 
has come to make you new. This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God, Mary, did you? send the program out to uh, all those um, folks and if you don't know this you can go to YouTube if you are a Facebook uh, person you can uh, go to Facebook and uh, follow our radio program here and it is just under Jesus paid it all radio program or you can go to Facebook at George Vassine, uh, at Little River Community Church. You'll be able to find um, and follow us if you choose to. Um, but for all those folks that would watch this on YouTube, we'll send the program out to you today and pray that it'd be a blessing to you. You know, it. Uh, um, there's just something about being able to um, use the media that is offered today, you know, you, you used to be able to, and, and you can still do it. I mean, I still have uh, cassettes. I still have CDs at home that I could get out and listen to. Uh, but it's something, uh, say something were to happen to me and my grandchildren, um, all of a sudden someone says, oh, well, your grandfather, <laughs> if they don't already know, um, put a bunch of stuff on YouTube. We don't know if many people ever watched it, but you can watch it. <laughs> and uh, now you have the videos there and the ability to just go there anytime and watch. I've got over a hundred videos on there. Um, and hopefully, um, my whole purpose for doing radio in the first place is not to build a name for myself. My whole purpose to do anything on YouTube is just to get the Word of God out. That's just plain and simple. Um, I can support other people or I can try to do something myself and that's what I've tried to do is something myself to uh, spread the Word of God. And so hopefully uh, uh, you'll go there and check it out. Let me know if you visit the page, uh, if you visit YouTube page, just leave a remark if you will. Um, I say to folks, if there's a song you want to hear, I can try that for you. Um, well, maybe. <laughs> Depending on how uh, um, how uh, I am willing to be challenged, I guess, uh, on an instrument or on vocals. But I'll try for you. 
Uh, the book of John this morning. I'm just going to read, or this evening rather, I'm just going to read to you um, five verses, something that I spoke on this morning at the service and probably something that I uh, touched on not long ago here. Um, but um, we're, of course, in the holiday season for Christmas, and we just came through Thanksgiving, and of course we're thankful for everything that the Lord's done for us. And now here we are, we're coming into the Christmas season where we will um, talk about, read about, sing about, as we just did, the birth of Christ. Um, at different times in your life, uh, there may be different memories that come back from uh, uh, your time as a child, to your time as a parent, to your time as a grandparent, and some of you maybe as a great-grandparent, uh, certain memories that you recall of Christmas time. But um, uh, I want to um, uh, read today, and hopefully, um, I know those that are watching this will, but hopefully uh, you not only understand uh, the purpose of of Christmas, but we realize that not all people celebrate it for the same reason that Christians do. Can I tell you honestly that it was December 25th when Jesus was born? No, I cannot tell you that. Um, I don't know the day for sure. I know that the, the studies have uh, set it as far and as close to uh, years and all that as they could, but I don't know for sure, but I do know he was born. And the most important thing was he was born in here. As I was born again, I received him, and so uh, I have experienced that new birth. But not everybody celebrates Christmas this time of year uh, as the Christian does. Not everybody celebrates that as the birth of Christ, as something that they could look to uh, that would bring joy uh, in a celebration for them. In chapter 1 of the book of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him not any, was there not anything made that was made. To Him, uh, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I think in those five uh, scriptures there, it's basic for us to understand that uh, if we are made in the image of God, I have a physical body that if you're watching this video, of course you can see. I am soul, I am mind, and so in this, uh, I am three in one. And as we are made in this image of God, uh, we understand that uh, uh, later in this chapter even, and in this book, uh, we find that John the Baptist baptizes Jesus in the Jordan River, and as the bodily form of Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel, is being baptized, uh, we can see that the uh, Holy Spirit as a dove lands on him, so we see part two there, we see uh, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and then from heaven we hear the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so I would say to you today that as we are looking uh, at this scripture, we understand, uh, we can understand that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. In this beginning, now if we go back to the book of Exodus, we would, or to the book of Genesis rather, we would look and we would see that uh, in the beginning there, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word. And so Jesus Christ, a pre-incarnate Christ is there. And this is speaking of the divinity of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And so as in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So when God says, let us make man in our image, I know I say this quite often because I, I think it, it's something that needs to be stressed. He was not talking to the angels. He was not saying to the angels, hey, fellas, let's make man in our image. We are not made in the image of angels. But when he said, let us make man in our image, he had to be talking to someone. And so it is my belief, and even through this scripture, I think this verifies that he was speaking here about Jesus Christ. He was speaking here uh, when it says that uh, the word was God, the Word was with God, and I believe that when God said, let us make man in our image, this is it. And so now here, thousands of years later, uh, after the fall of man, 
And I told our congregation this morning, but I believe that if you have children or grandchildren, you don't want to pay them to come and tell you that they love you. You want them to tell them they love you because they love you. And so God didn't want to make us to where we had to worship him or had to accept him. So he gave us the opportunity. He gave us an opportunity to reject him or to accept him. And I don't know for sure how many people will be in heaven. I know the dimensions are set. I don't know for sure how many people will spend an eternity separated from God uh, in hell. But I do know that the scripture says it enlarges itself every day. But what I do know is that you have an opportunity to serve him today, to follow him today, to fall in love with him today. And chances are it may be difficult. If you're out there and you're lost, you may not fall in love with God because you're seeing some of the things that happen in the church. And if that be the case and you are in a church where there are complications like that and where there are people that do not bring a good representation of God or Jesus Christ or how we should be as Christians... My prayer is is that God takes care of that so when people look at the house of God, they can honestly see somebody that cares for them, that loves them, that wants the best for them in their life. Oh, how many times I've heard people say of churches how hypocritical they are. Uh, People how they come and someone will just look down their nose at, at someone else and maybe because they don't dress the same or they don't. I understand, folks, about dress codes. I understand about how people think we ought to look and how we ought to present and how we ought to bring our best to God. But sometimes, folks, there's a little difference there because there's sometimes there is someone who has been converted and someone who has never been converted. And I, for one, will not be the guy who runs somebody out of the church. He comes to visit looking for the love of God and what would it do me any good if I were to pick up rocks and stone the man before he ever finds the love of God so I won't do that Um, but I can tell you that the world is looking for something I don't think they honestly know what they're looking for I don't I think they are looking for peace but they don't know in what format that they will find it. So they look to the bottle. They look to drugs. They look to uh, to all kinds of things that would uh, they think bring pleasure to their uh, physical body. But they're looking for something to settle them. They're looking for something. I think men and women um, look for something to not only bring them peace to bring them joy, to bring them happiness. And what they don't understand if they've never accepted Jesus Christ is that He is all of these things. He embodies all of these things. And the ability to give someone the help, the love that they need is right here in the Word of God. The same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. And so um, we see that if if he could look around at this world, if you've ever heard the song that says he made uh, the tree that he knew would be the old rugged cross, he formed the land that he knew would be uh, Golgotha, the place of the skull. Everything that you see, there was nothing made that was made without him. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. A few weeks back we read in the book of Isaiah preparing for the coming of Christ as far as a Messiah in the Old Testament. We were reading into the New Testament where we will see, we will jump into his birth next week. But when we look at that, we find that there were those that sat in great darkness and a great light had shone to them. But this scripture here says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Do you know how many people are looking and they choose to overlook? I said this morning, I was talking about uh, the old saying, it takes one to know one. And when I run into somebody that is rebellious by nature, I know them right off. And if you know anything about me, you would probably understand that. But uh, by nature, I, 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 it's by my 
makeup, I am a rebellious person. As a child, I rebelled. My father would only let me get away with so much or so far before he would rein me in, but that was my nature. And of course, uh, through salvation, he did change my heart. He has worked on me. But there are times that the flesh would want to come and appear and when I see that in someone else, I think, I got you. I understand. I remember my daughter saying to me one time she had not been married long. And, of course, we raised both of our children in church. And she had been married long. And I said something to her about how I wish they would attend church more. And I wish they would come. It was heartbreaking to me. And I'll be quite honest with you. Ten years later, it's still heartbreaking to me. I don't know that I will ever get over it. But I do know there's nothing I can do about it. And if you ever watch this, sis, I love you, but that's the truth. I would love to see her attend. I would love to see her and uh, her family and our grandchildren, her husband. I would love to see all of them go, and not just for me and mom, uh, not just for me and their mother, but, uh, but because they would want to. But I remember having a conversation with her. She had been married not long. She and I sat at a restaurant in Waverly, Ohio, and I said to her, Says I would like if you would come to church more, and I don't understand. And she said, "But Dad," she said, "I've I've been taking to church my whole life. I went to church my whole life." And she said, "At this point in my life, she said, I just want to see how my friends live." She said, "I want to see what their life is like." And when she said that, I thought to myself, "I've been there." <laughs> Little did I know before my dad died how heartbreaking it was for him to hear the same words come out of my mouth. Um, I want to do my own thing. I want to be my own person. I don't down somebody for that. I think everybody reaches that to a certain extent, or maybe not everybody. Maybe that's just an in general statement, but a lot of people will reach that point in their life where they now have freedom. They are an adult and they want to do whatever it is they want to do. And if they don't want to do something, they want to back away from that. But you run into people that will say, there's no way I'd ever go to church because those people try to tell you how you should live. Man, pick up the word of God. If you ever get a relationship with God, don't worry about other people telling you how you should live. If he loves you and he forgives you and he lives in you, you don't need me telling you what you can do, what you can do, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. That is not the job of the preachers to come back and keep reminding you, hey, don't touch this, hey, don't do that. That's his job. The Holy Spirit lives in you. If you are truly one of his, he'll take care of that. You're his child. You're not mine. You don't. You would never see me walk over some of you people are like this but this ain't me I'm not this guy you're never going to see me when we were raising our kids or grandkids watch somebody else's child get a little rebellious and then walk over and pick them up and give them a good busting on the backside I'm not their daddy I ain't going to do that. And let me tell you something. If he's not your father, he's not going to chastise you. But when he is, he's going to show you. He's going to lead you. He's going to instruct you. But do you know what happens at times? Yeah. The light shines and it shines on the darkness, and the darkness doesn't comprehend, it doesn't understand, and the darkness wants to sink back away. Sometimes it wants nothing to do with that light. He is the ultimate light. Um, in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, you weren't there, I wasn't there, but he was there. In the beginning was the word, he was there. The power was there. The ability to say, I will go, I will be the sacrifice for them. And then for uh, the angel to declare to Mary that although she had never been with a man and she was a virgin, never known a man, uh, that you are going to be with child and that baby will be the son of God. And his name will be called Jesus Emmanuel God with us. I read to you a couple weeks ago, I believe it was, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Why is that? They didn't understand. We don't understand sometimes. You know, I, I think I read sometime, and I'm not sure exactly uh, if this is the case, but I read sometime ago where it takes at least seven times for a man, woman, boy, or girl to, to hear an average of seven times for them to hear about God before they ever decide whether they want to serve Him. You say, well, brother, that's not true. I got saved the first time. Well, maybe that preacher preached hell hot. 
<laughs> but sometimes it takes people listening uh, for them to hear God and to receive the light. Jesus paid it all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Back over to you, Mr. Lloyd. Reverend George, evangelist George Vestine, Jesus paid it all ministries. If you'd like to get in touch, 